October 28th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Peter chapter 2 from the New Testament. So get rid of all evil and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander, and yearn like a newborn infant for pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up to salvation, if you have experienced the Lord's kindness. So as you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but chosen and priceless in God's sight, you yourselves as living stones are built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood and to offer spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, Look, I lay in Zion a stone, a chosen and priceless cornerstone, and whoever believes in him will never be put to shame. So you who believe see his value, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stumbling stone and a rock to trip over. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may proclaim the virtues of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You once were not a people, but now you are God's people. You were shown no mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to keep away from fleshly desires that do battle against the soul and maintain good conduct among the non-Christians so that though they now malign you as wrongdoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God when he appears. Be subject to every human institution for the Lord's sake, whether to a king as supreme or to governors as though he commissions to punish wrongdoers and praise those who do good. For God wants you to silence the ignorance of foolish people by doing good. Live as free people, not using your freedom as a pretext for evil, but as God's slaves. Honor all people, love the family of believers, fear God, honor the king. Slaves, be subject to your masters with all reverence, not only to those who are good and gentle, but also to those who are perverse. For this finds God's favor, if because of conscience toward God, someone endures hardships and suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if you sin and are mistreated and endure it? But if you do good and suffer and so endure, this finds favor with God. For to this you were called, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving an example for you to follow in his steps. He committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. When he was maligned, he did not answer back. When he suffered, he threatened no retaliation, but committed himself to God who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we may cease from sinning and live for righteousness. By his wounds you were healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have turned back to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. God, there's a couple of really great reminders in this particular chapter of Peter. One of the one of the big ones is we'll definitely be persecuted, just like your son was persecuted by man uh, for what he believed in and what he was chosen to do. But part two of that is in verse 23 when it says, "When he was maligned, he did not answer back. When he suffered, he threatened no retaliation." but committed himself to God who judges justly. I would say for us, that's a really difficult one, God, that our first response is to defend. Our first response is frustration, anger, humiliation, jealousy. Our, our first response isn't to turn it over to you, unfortunately, at least, at least not for me. Um, I was struggling. I was having a conversation with one of my just graduated high school girls who very sadly has caused a lot of a lot of drama for her family and she was making some very public statements on on Facebook and I was trying to kind of talk her down off of that <laughs> the best I could and 
probably the hardest thing was watching her plead that she was doing good just like this chapter in Peter talks about about doing good and how she was um, not behaving that same way anymore that she had turned a new corner and as soon as one of her family members wrote something it wasn't even mean just wrote something in response she attacked them she defended herself uh, she told them that they were liars like she everything she said she had turned the corner on uh, was visible right there in that post and I, I think about this particular chapter when dealing with that situation that she was being good for the sake of the world not good in the context of what you expect us to be good and then when she was called on it called on what she was saying about her family um, she was angry uh, belittling uh, defensive and it was so incredibly hard to watch because when I asked her about it she possibly telling the truth told me she had no idea what I was talking about she honestly felt like she was responding correctly by trying to set her version of the story straight and God it's not just that situation all of us especially me can learn from this that we will be persecuted we will be persecuted by Christians we will be persecuted by non-Christians um, we will be tempted in all those different situations we have two choices we can defend ourselves we can get angry uh, we can belittle somebody or we can remain quiet and reflect in gl your glory to other people you know Peter talks a lot about that that how we live our lives reflects you God if we say we're Christians and we live lives of anger and frustration and and lying that's what is reflective of you because people see us as um, your spokespeople <laughs> down here on earth uh, if we live to the best possible way lives that are sinless again to the best possible way that we can um, constantly looking out for other people sharing the gospel with other people all of those things glorify you and because we're choosing to live our lives that way then it helps other people realize that relationship and and how amazing it is how powerful it is how filled with grace and mercy it is God we do have such a hard time when somebody calls us out on something and maybe part of our anger is the fact that some piece of that's true or it rings true in our heart and our first reaction is defend to defend ourselves because for some reason in the society we feel we have to God help us to keep our mouths shut this time that we stop we don't answer and we think and take the time to pray about the situation before we figure out what our next step is we have to realize how much our lives reflect you God that we become so self-focused uh, that we try and make it all about us and Peter's really clear about that that we can't we have to follow Jesus example the best possible way we can and even though it's one of the most difficult things to do to not de to not defend yourself God just allow us to remember who we are here on earth and that our time here on earth is very short in all things considered and what time we do have here needs to be spent correctly glorifying you through our actions our words our deeds and even our things that are left unsaid in your son's name i pray amen